when you're getting ready to take the air conditioning and heat pump Nate exam, one of the most commonly failed parts of the exam is the uh, troubleshooting part of the, the test because it uses exclusively schematic diagrams. And the diagrams aren't exactly what we're used to seeing on equipment, but this is pretty typical of what you're going to see. You may see it for a heat pump, you may see it for a commercial unit, uh, gas furnace, and so forth. So it's really important to understand all of your schematic symbols what they represent without um, having to refer back to any chart or any legend and the other thing you need to remember is when you're looking at a schematic circuit such as this and this happens to be an air conditioning system straight cool the circuit is has power applied so there's uh, 230 volts 208 230 coming in or we have 24 volts at the transformer and the system is at rest so there is no call for cooling there there is 24 volts on the R terminal going out to the thermostat but this thermostat that sits out here is not calling for anything at this time so you're going to get questions for example they're going to ask um, LPS1 low pressure switch represents a switch that uh, opens on pressure fall opens on pressure rise. It's a temperature switch that opens on temperature fall or a temperature switch that opens on temperature rise. So you're going to get very confusing questions. You just need to know that this what a low pressure switch does and find that correct answer. The other thing you're going to get asked is what controls the crankcase heater and when if the condenser fan is running does the is the crankcase heater heating or is it de-energized and not heating so you're going to get questions like that you need to really be able to um, trace through these schematics and figure it out so let's look at the schematic uh, step by step so remember everything is sitting as at rest and it's waiting for a call for cooling so we have 24 volts coming off the R terminal. It goes out to the thermostat, and we, we get a call for cooling. The thermostat makes, and we have 24 volts is sent back to the Y terminal, and also 24 volts is sent to the G terminal. So let's take the Y terminal first. So here's what happens. 24 volts comes out of the Y terminal, and it goes through the normally closed low pressure switch and the normally closed high pressure switch to C1. Now this symbol right here, the circle, represents the coil on the contactor. So it tells us that we have 24 volts applied to C1 and we have now energized C1. Now you go up to the the high voltage side of the circuit and you're going to want to look for the C1s that you can find. The these three contacts are when they're when it is at rest with no call for cooling and the contactor de-energized. So when we have 24 volts applied to the solenoid on C1, the normally open contact here closes and the normally contact that we have here closes. What this does, it, it allows a path for the power to flow and current to flow through the compressor and it allows current and applies voltage to the condenser fan so they will be running. The other thing that happens is this normally closed contact here opens up. So it removes the current and the power from the crankcase heater and the crankcase heater is turned off. So that takes care of the 24 volts on the Y terminal then we have 24 volts on the G terminal. 24 volts comes through to the indoor fan relay this again is the solenoid part of the relay that energizes and closes the con contacts. And now we have to find 
IFR contacts up here. Here is our normally open indoor fan relay contact when the solenoid and power is applied to the contactor the normally open indoor fan relay contact will close. That allows a circuit for the current and voltage to be applied and flow through the indoor fan motor and the indoor fan motor runs. So that is is how we break down the circuit piece by piece. These contactors and relays are the things that you really need to get your head wrapped around because the the coil down here where your control 24 volts is applied affects what happens up here on the contacts. The one thing I want to make mention of is if we take a look at this circuit where it is at rest and there's no call for cooling, um, the, this is a normally closed contact on the compressor relay. So at all times when this system is not cooling, there is a path for current to flow through that normally closed contact through the crankcase heater, and that keeps the oil on the compressor warm. When power is applied to the contactor, the compressor contactor, that normally opens that normally closed contact opens up and removes the power from the crankcase heater. So there is something going on here. We do have some current flow and voltage applied and something happening in this circuit when, when it's at rest and that happens to be that crankcase heater is on. So what happens if we have a uh, low pressure switch that is faulty or there is a low pressure condition and this is a normally closed low pressure switch and if the pressure drops below its design point, this low pressure switch will open up. So let's take a look at what happens if we have a low pressure fault and we have a call for cooling. So we have our 24 volts comes out of the R terminal. It comes back in to the Y terminal and to the G terminal. That 24 volts comes up here to the normally closed low pressure switch and since we have a low pressure condition it's open. Voltage and current flow stop at that low pressure switch. Consequently the compressor contactor never becomes energized. So the state that we're in right now is 24 volts applied to the Y terminal. There is, there is no power to the contactor to pull the contacts in so the normally closed contact on the crank for the crankcase heater is still closed. We still have a crankcase heater op operating. The normally open contacts for the compressor contactor are still open because we don't have this coil energized. So neither the compressor nor the condenser fan will be running. So we have our 24 volts comes into the G terminal and let's see what happens here. Remember this low pressure switch is open because of a low pressure condition, whatever it may be. We do have power getting to the indoor fan relay so that indoor fan relay does energize and the normally open contact for the indoor fan relay closes applying power to the indoor fan motor. So if we have a low pressure switch issue going on with this circuit we're going to have the indoor fan relay will be energized the indoor fan motor will be running because the low pressure switch is open the compressor contactor will not be energized so we don't have any power applied to the compressor or to the condenser fan motor so the outdoor unit won't be running However, we will have power and the crankcase heater will be operational. So that's pretty much it in the nutshell. We'll go through a few more of these until uh, it gets drummed into your head. And we'll have quite a few questions regarding schematics such as this on our practice exam. So that's it for, for this uh, installation of the 
Nate Air Conditioning Heat Pump Prep Course. If you have any questions, please email me, put it in the student forum. I'd be more than happy to help you in any way I can.